So life is, uh, Mark has said this forever, life is a process of preparation. A baby prepares to be born in the womb. And what a preparation that is. In nine months, this little thing goes from little or nothing to feet, hands, developed lungs, so they can be birthed in, <clears throat> into the universe and, and survive. <laughs> it just amazes me. And then from that time, the baby prepares, and you prepared in your mother's womb, and things took place in there that affected you the rest of your life and still affected you. And, then, and as you grow, then you prepare for life, and you start learning the language, you start learning how to walk, and your parents take care of you, but then all of a sudden there's a, a, a process of release. You prepare in school to have a career. You prepare, uh, you know, to have a family and be married. You, you prepare for all the events of life, and then as you go, you prepare for your retirement off. But you know, from the time we're conceived until we leave this earth, the greatest event that you're pre preparing for is your last breath. Hardly anybody wants to talk about that, and most people won't talk about it. You won't see a seminar on it. But the truth is, of all the things you and I need to be prepared for and have be successful in, we place a lot of value on our careers, on our finances, on our family, our marriage, and, and our children. But in all reality, the greatest thing you can prepare for is your last breath. And in, any, you know, in one way, we came into this world alone. You know, we're in our mother's womb, but we're one. And then we prepare. And when we take our last breath, we may have family around us, and we may be holding their hands, and we may be... But you leave this earth alone. You know what most people run away from? Fight, try not to have happen. They try real hard not to be alone. They don't want to be alone. They'll just keep themselves super busy. A lot of people can't sit still for a moment. I, I, jo I shared with them, I said, you know, a lot of times I go to restaurants, you know, I'm a people person, but there's times I need to be alone, more and more. And I'll go to a restaurant by myself, and I'll, you know, I remember the times when I tell my kids, yeah, where'd you go? I, well, I went to a nice restaurant. You know, I went there, who are you with? Was it me? And they go, Dad, I know people that have never gone to a restaurant by themselves in their life. They won't do it, they won't be alone. And so I had some fun just talking about that, but, you know, because I said, you know, the, my favorite person is me to be with. And part of it is because I'm with him all the time. Might as well like it. It's sad when you don't like yourself. You're not much fun to be around. I think one of the reasons people are drawn to me sometimes is because uh, I like me. I'm not saying in a narcissistic way of being selfish. I'm just saying this is what God gave me. It's his gift to me. Why would I want to despise it? Why would I want to reject it? Why would I want to be disappointed in it? But you guys know it. Everywhere in the world, comparison is going on, and it just destroys us. It just destroys us. And you have heard the story, but one of the ladies that came to this church, she's, I'm, I'm with her. She's, she's an hour, hour and a half away from dying. And we're just, I'm holding her hand, talking to her. She knows she's going, and I know she's going, and she, someone was on the TV, a commercial, and she just, I hate that. I said, what do you hate? She says, those beautiful women, there's, they got the beautiful bodies, and, uh, you know, and, and she was still just, totally distraught about the body that she was given and she had she said the mark on my face has caused me to lose jobs and lose friends and, and this hideous thing on my face and I looked at her face and I got I finally said when she's dying what have I got to lose I said what are you talking about and she finally pointed out and I thought I didn't have I couldn't even see it without her telling it and she lived her whole life despising her body. And on her deathbed, she's, 
born again, but she was all... And I thought, this is insanity. You're about to be home with your with the Lord Jesus and all that, and you're still concerned about the body that you had. And I thought, this was a God moment for me to be able to tell you to say, think about it. What is this deal that we do of comparing ourselves and being down on ourselves? It has nothing to do with the greatest moment of your life of taking your last breath and being eternally with Jesus forever and ever. And, you know, the, the more we can walk in this, the greater, you know... These people make, they get fixated, even as Christians, about having a great marriage. I'm sorry, if you don't have a great marriage, life is still good. <laughs> sorry. There are people who elevate marriage and family and career and ministry way above where it should be. Bring the idols down. Break them, throw them, cast them down. That's not, that's not what we worship. That's not shouldn't be our highest priority. Our highest priority should be our preparation for the last breath of our life. We got to look forward with everything inside of us. You say, well, man, I, I'm I'm already discouraged. I think maybe I'll just go home. You know, when you really when you really grasp, grasp this, well, you want you you you're willing to live a hundred years. You're willing to live without. You're li well, you're willing to live alone. You're willing to do so many things because you're so full and content with this incredible intimacy with Jesus. Because the preparation for your last breath is intimacy with Jesus. And the scripture says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. You know, and, and, and don't raise your hands, but inside maybe raise your hand. But how many of you, how many of you believe in the Bible? How many, you all do. How many of you say the Bible is, is God's word to us to show us? How many of you believe in Jesus? We all do. How many believe in the Holy Spirit? Yeah, we all do. And here the Spirit of God speaks through Jesus from the Father and says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. And yet I venture to say, if you said, how are you doing in believing that? I think it would be kind of a little bit of a raising of the hand. I'm not condemning this. I'm just saying if you're not growing, you're dying. If you're not changing, you're dying. And if, you know, one thing I'm so grateful for is, uh, you know, I'm the old guy now. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, I, everywhere I go, I'm the old guy. I'm, they call me dad, they call me father, they call me wise, they call me all that stuff. And I go, man, I, Dave, guys don't, I'm still just a punk. I'm just getting started. And I'm still as hungry as I was when I was 16 years old, saying, God, I want an abundant life, and I, and I want to live, and I want to live abundantly. And that means change. You know how few people want to change? How few people want to change any of their ideas or any of their ideology. I tell you, you know, especially Christians, conservative Christians are some of the, uh, the toughest people in the world. They are so, they're so bent on being uh, solid in the word and solid in their doctrine and all that. You can't get them to look fresh at it for nothing. They got the same beliefs that they had when they were in 16 years old or so and they can't change anything. And you're dying. And you're not preparing for your last breath like you should be. We should be looking to him saying, teach me, show me. I want to see more. I want to see more of your glory. I want to understand your word more. And this little scripture, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things be added unto you. Seek means to, to seek with the intent to find, not like your kids. Go get your socks. I can't find them. They're in your room. I looked. And you walk in and they're on the floor. They had to trip over them. They don't have the seek with the intent. You and I need to have a, uh, you know, we can have a, we can prepare and we can seek with the intent of finding his kingdom. Where's his kingdom? It's always here. The kingdom of God's in your heart. If you're going to seek it, you've got to seek it there. You know what that means? That means you've got to... You can't seek it in a church. You can't seek it through a pastor. You can't seek it through Bible school. You can't. And we emphasize those things all over the world. We're emphasizing you go to Bible school, go to this, go to that, you know, get, you know, get, join this denomination or whatever else. And I'm telling you, you don't seek the kingdom through anybody. 
It, you're alone with this. That's how you find it. If you seek with all your heart, not with all your knowledge. Now, we, we, want, this, we want the security. You know, when I got on fire for Jesus, as a, uh, you know, came back to Bible college, I was, I was pumped and I was going. And <clears throat> uh, uh, I won't go there. But you got to seek this with all of your heart, with all of your soul and all of your mind. I'm preaching to the choir. I know you're doing it, but at the same time, folks, we can grow a lot. We have not come close. The ocean is huge of his love to experience, and it's inside you. Here's the deal. When I came back on fire, I wanted the confirmation of my family, my dad, my pastor, and other people. Other God, I, wanted, I wanted to share with them what was inside of me because I wanted them to look at it and say, right on, John, right on, you know? And when I didn't get it, I pushed harder and pushed harder. And finally, the Lord, I said, man, how come nobody wants to hear this? He goes, it's not that they don't want to hear the truth. He says, you're just so insecure, it's hard to take. He said, you're offending people. I go, why? Because he said, you don't believe it. And they know it. Because if you really believed it, you wouldn't be trying so hard to convince them. Isn't that profound? I wanted their approval more than I wanted to help them. I, wanted, I was still insecure. I was stretching my limits of what, you know, and I was stretching out there into new territory, and I was insecure, and I wanted, I wanted confirmation. And if I could talk them into it, then, oh, I must be all right. And the Lord said, why don't you sit down, shut up, and grow up, and get alone for a while. And I backed off, so-called ministering to people. Just, you seek the kingdom alone. You start embracing to be alone, to seek the kingdom. You look for the moments. You fight for those moments. You stop and you start saying no to some things. But the biggest thing is, generally speaking, we're so afraid of being alone. We have to have the music on. We have to have something on. We have to have TV on. We have to have our phone in front of us. Man, dear God, it is amazing how everybody in the world should have a kink in their neck. Everywhere. And I was sharing this in Ron church and just said, but you're never alone. Because he is always with you. So you're not trying to be alone. You're trying to be intimate with him. In here. Not out here. Not for ministry. Not for building a ministry. Not for building a business. Not seeking him for, you know, how many people say, oh, will you please pray for me? I'm, I'm looking for a wife. I'm looking for a husband. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking at, and it's almost like, you know, I want to just sometimes say, you're looking at the wrong place because it says seek first the kingdom. And that word means seek with an intent to find, but it also means start seeking and never stop seeking. And it not only means that, but it says, it, does, it means seek first in priority, but it actually, in the Greek, says to me, seek only the kingdom. Seek only the kingdom. And that's where all of us have a great opportunity to grow. And don't feel condemned for where you're at. Just start going, growing. Seek only the kingdom. Then all these things will be added unto you. The peace, the joy, the contentment, no fear. And I will tell you, you know, I've, I've got a long ways to go. You've got a long ways to go. But isn't it great what we've tasted so far? And I can say, getting on those planes alone once in a while, I think about Jody once said to me, when she first started traveling with me, she goes, um, she kind of took charge and did a great job. And I let her, and, and every once in a while, I'd, Once while she'd look at me and said, Dad, how do you make it without me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have no brag here. And one way I can say I'm a little lost lamb when I go. But the one thing I can tell you is I seek him. And he always gets me through. 
and where I've grown from 40 years ago, I can tell you there's more peace in my heart, there's more joy, there's more confidence. And I get on those long plane rides and I go, this is a great opportunity for me to, to be alone with the Holy Spirit and enjoy myself, and I do. Praise God. Don't be afraid of facing yourself. Yeah, but I just don't like being alone. You'll never have enough people around you <clears throat> to bring the peace that you're looking for. You'll never have enough people complimenting you to have the feeling of love that you're looking for. Some of you know marriage won't do it. Family won't do it. Oh, it's great. I mean, that's wonderful. I, I mean, one of my greatest joys is the fact that uh, coming back here to be with my family and be with you. I could be traveling all the time right now. It'd be a very fruitful thing, but I thank God that you didn't say that to me. Just as come and go as I tell you. I'm so grateful to be coming home. But it's, part of it is because I've learned to be alone with myself and him. And I'm hungry for more. Would you stand with me, please? <clears throat> and as you stand, just realize that it's, it is scary. To wonder about your future. But when Jesus said, if you seek me, you'll find me. When you find me, everything else will be there. He meant it. It's not just good theology. It's not just great teaching. It's not just some doctrine. It's truth. In one way, I felt so sorry for so many people that feel so alone in these countries and the teenagers are so scared out of their mind that they're not going to have a good life and all that. And yet here we are with, a, with this simple message. And no matter what country, no matter where, I thought, Lord, what do you want me to do? And he said, just tell them the truth. It will work everywhere in the world. It will work with anybody's background. It will work with anybody's heartaches that have been given. It will, it will work with anybody, no matter what's been done to them and no matter how, how desperate they have been. He said, my truth, my gospel transforms people's lives. And it's as simple as this. Seek me and my kingdom and everything else will come in like a flood. It's reality that can be attained daily, moment by moment. And if you're like me, you'd say, yeah, but boy, it's difficult. Yeah, but it, it doesn't happen to everybody. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, that's one, but here's the simple truth. He did not lie. Seek him first and only in your heart. Be willing to face being alone, with him alone. And the floodgates will open. And you experience life and life abundant. No matter what the circumstances are. Unbelievable. I know it, it sounds like a fantasy, but it's not. It's his gift to us. Our sonship. Forever. And when you pull your last breath out of your lungs, you're ready to step up to the starting line of your eternal existence with Him. And you'll run your race very, very well. Jesus, thank you. What else can we say? You're everything to us. We seek you. Amen. Amen. Happy Fourth of July.